Hey guys, what's up? So I just wanted to give you a little leg update since I've only done like one video on my leg and I haven't updated it since I can't even remember. And uh, I'm four months post-op now, so I want to show you how much the uh, they took a, the graft from my leg to cover my arm. I want to show you what that looks like now. It's definitely faded, so that's nice. But first, I want to go over a few things that are kind of good to keep in mind to mentally prepare yourself when it comes to this surgery. It's just some things that I didn't really think about beforehand that might be helpful for you guys if you guys are about to uh, get into this surgery and recovery and all that stuff. So first things first, something that I would like to have known or like to have mentally prepared myself for was sleeping on my back for so long because I'm a stomach sleeper. So it's been really trying uh, only sleeping on my back. I've only now been able to sleep a little bit on my side. Dr. Chen doesn't really suggest you sleep on your side until like about six weeks post-op and it has to do with like blood flow and stuff like that. Uh, right now, it has to do more with putting any sort of like pressure or whatever on the urethra because I just had urethroplasty. Otherwise, I would have been okay to sleep on my side, but I had another complication. So uh, sleeping on my back has definitely been trying and it would've been nice if I was gonna mentally prepare for it a little bit better. I guess I kinda did, but I didn't expect for it to be so long, because it still makes me nervous to sleep on my side, because just things kinda end up in weird places, and I'm just always conscious of what's going on, and that leads me into the next thing to prepare for. Keep in mind that <laughs> you're gonna feel a lot like your dick is gonna fall off for a while, or just that it's super delicate, super fragile, and you're always gonna be like aware of where it's at. Uh, hopefully like not having it in a weird position. I know when I was out in public sometimes I had to like really really fight the urge to check to make sure it was <laughs> still there or like okay. It always was. It's just kind of like I'm an anxious person so it could just be my problem but that was definitely something that was kind of burdensome after a while and uh, finally after I was able to go back to wearing like regular underwear uh, which is actually still different. It's another thing I need to talk about. Uh, it felt a little bit better after I got the catheter out and after I didn't have to like keep gauze in my pants and stuff like that. So yeah, that's just something to kind of mentally prepare, prepare for and keep in mind. Another thing is when you are first released from the hospital, really kind of take a look at your surroundings. Like if you're staying nearby in an unfamiliar place, the best thing that you can really look for is like a recliner because sometimes beds can be too high to get into. The bed at the place I was staying at was definitely pretty high, so every time I got in and out of the bed, I was just like cussing up a storm because it hurt so bad. And uh, sitting in a chair is not pleasant at all. So a recliner is really like the ideal situation, at least it was for me, or at least a bed that's low enough where you could still kind of like sit back in it, and I think that would be good. High beds are the devil. Uh, <laughs> So like when it comes to the different types of underwear, I've had to buy all new underwear and I've had to buy the underwear that has a separate supportive pouch just because it is more supportive. You do have like the weight of the phallus is a little bit different. That's another thing to get used to. And having it supportive feels good. So it's just not kind of like flopping around and uh, feeling a little weird. <laughs> so support is nice. I am a fan of the separate pouch underwear. I'll probably do like a whole nother separate video on that because I feel like it's too long to talk about in just this video. Another thing to keep in consideration is that the tasks are going to be pretty difficult because you have like one bum arm, you got something going on with your leg, and you have like a catheter and stuff like that. One of the, it, it's, you're going to need help. So to make sure that you have a caretaker that's willing to be patient with you, take care of you. Uh, things at first that can be difficult with only one arm, even just going to the bathroom and staying clean. <laughs> your caretaker, you if you're not close to them before, like you're gonna be now because they're gonna see you naked. They're gonna see you vulnerable. And uh, just be prepared for that. Something that is surprisingly difficult is when you have a catheter, having to choose whether you're gonna poop or pee first because whether you like I, I didn't really think about it beforehand but if you haven't noticed when you go to the bathroom let's say you have to poop normally you pee and poop 
in the same time. So that's something I didn't think about at all, but when you have a catheter, you cannot pee and poop at the same time, and your body is going to want to pee and poop at the same time. And it's it can be a little bit, <laughs> it can be a little painful trying to control both things. And uh, so what I did personally was I emptied my bladder first, if I could, and then I would proceed to poop and uh, everyone poops, so we can talk about that, right? Another thing that I would mentally prepare for would be for your arm tightness. That is something that I was not prepared for and prepared for arm or hand numbness, hand swelling. Uh, prepare for a little bit of a struggle with the arm. It's definitely been kind of one of my longest struggles, but things are finally getting better. I kind of I just did a video about my arm update, so if you want, you can go watch that. Another thing to consider is when you do get home from the hospital, it, just make sure that if you have any pets, that they're not going to jump up on you or jump up into your lap because that could be not so good news. <laughs> I had to stay away from my pet for a little bit because she's a jumper and she would have definitely just like pulled my whole dick off, <laughs> no doubt. And another thing to be prepared for, I would say, would be just a bunch of really weird sensations. Uh, you've got a lot of nerves kind of reconnecting, waking up, not waking up. Like the vaginectomy, vaginectomy area is one of the most kind of weird sensation areas that I still experience weird sensations in. And it's mostly just nerves settling in. There's, it's, I can't even really describe the sensation. So just kind of be prepared for that. I definitely experienced pain for a long time when sitting, uh, but it does get better. I'm feeling a lot better when it comes to the vaginectomy area. Like I can sit up now, so we're good. Just be prepared to move a little differently for a while, walk a little slower for a while, not wear pants for a while maybe. Wearing pants is still not the most comfortable for me because there is not as much like move, like your range of motion is a little bit limited and it kind of like squeezes the crotch area a little bit more, especially when sitting down. So um, yeah, just know that it's okay if you have to wear shorts for a long time, even if it's in the winter or like sweatpants, uh, because that is what is most comfortable to me. So these are just some things to consider before surgery just to kind of mentally prepare yourself. These are things that I didn't really think about, so hopefully it is helpful for you if you haven't thought of these things either. So now I'm going to show you my leg and what it looks like now, four months post-op. All right, so this is my leg, four months post-op. I haven't been able to do any leg work workouts, so don't judge my hairy, gross-looking legs at the moment. But, <laughs> so this is where they pulled the skin graft from to cover up my arm and uh, it's faded quite nicely and I'm pretty sure it's going to fade away even more so and probably won't be able to see it with uh, some more time. So that's cool. I've also been using that healing salve on my leg, the uh, essential oil blend that I talked about in my last video. I will link that down below if you want to check that out or buy it for any of your scar needs. Uh, so yeah, I think that's it. Feel free to ask any questions if you have them, and I appreciate you so much for watching. Uh, peace out, guys. I'll see you next time.